Welcome everyone to the studio. I hope it's as beautiful where you are as it is here in Portland, Oregon. It's a gorgeous day. So I got the door wide open to the studio, so it's great. Uh, so thanks for joining me. Um, today I have a really fun painting planned. I hope I hope it's going to be fun of sunflowers. I've already started it, so um, I'm hoping that I can get some some a little bit of mileage into it and, and get it close to finish. I'm, I'm, it's, it's on the large side. I think it's 24 by 24. So um, I might not be able to get the whole thing done today. But um, I wanted to first, before I start painting, talk about my setup here. And then I have a couple of announcements to share with you guys before we, we get going today. But um, first off, I just want to show you um, my uh, paint setup. And I do this in a couple of different ways, but this is just one way that I set up my acrylic paints. And it's a pretty, it's pretty awesome. So this is just a bead box that I bought at Michael's. And you can see that I've got a little layer of moist paper towel over the paint. So I've put the paint in these little um, compartments. And what's interesting about that is the paint stays pretty moist when there's a, a good quantity of paint in, in each section. And what I do is I put that paper towel on here. Well, first of all, I spray it a little bit, put that moist paper towel on it, put this um, back in my refrigerator uh, every night when I'm painting in acrylic. And it's pretty amazing that paint will stay really good for a, quite a long time. I'm talking like six months. Uh, so uh, that's really, really cool. And I just use a tongue depressor to um, dip into my bigger containers and make sure that I, when I need to refill these little compartments. So that's how that works. Um, and again, this is just one method of setting out an acrylic palette. Now today, I'm gonna to be mixing on a glass palette. So this is a big glass palette that I've, uh, just piece of glass, I think it's from an old coffee table. And that, that kind of glass is good because it's thick and it also has a nice soft edge to it. So you're not gonna get cut on it. Um, and then I've just sprayed the back side of it with a middle gray um, spray paint, a couple thin layers so it's nice and solid. And that's it. And it makes a terrific palette. Now these coffee table inserts, the glass inserts, one place you can get them uh, is Ikea. You can just buy just the insert. So that's a really good, um, really good tip, I think. Um, what else have I got today? A couple nice big buckets of water. want to really make sure that I um, can clean out my brushes really well. So the bigger the bucket of water, the farther you can go without changing it. Got a selection of brushes. I've also got some palette knives today because I'm what my plan for this piece today is to go in with an initial layer of color, kind of stain in the color and then go back over it with more impasto strokes. And in fact, I've brought out a little bit of modeling paste um, to that end to really just pump up the, um, the impasto quality of the acrylic paint. So that's what I've got planned for today. Um, what else did I wanna share on that? Well, I'll, I'll talk about this one as I go along. And um, we're having a sale right now. I just want to mention that on acrylics. We have the Seasons in Acrylic, my online workshop, Seasons in Acrylic, and Adventures in Acrylic. They're both on sale right now. They're $64 each, and it's kind of an amazing epic price. It's our best price ever. It's our spring acrylic sale. So that's, they're $84 off, so it's pretty amazing. Each one of these has about... 15 hours of video. So they're really, really great uh, workshops. Seasons in Acrylic focuses a bit more on landscape, kind of bigger scale paintings. And Adventures in Acrylic is a big variety of different subject matter, smaller scale pieces 
Um, so both of them are really accessible and re really great workshops, really incredible values. And for monthly people, you get your additional 15%, $15 off at checkout. So for you guys, it's kind of a no-brainer. Um, all right. Oh, and we just added two bonuses to Adventures in Acrylic, a uh, little salt and pepper shaker painting and a painting of some radishes. And we'll probably have some more surprises in store for you with those two before the end of the sale. And then I just have, I have the, I also have to talk about the Procreate workshop that we just did. We did a Zoom workshop with um, Procreate portrait painting. And it was, gosh, I got to say it was really epic. And I was so impressed with how engaged our students were and the progress that they made is really, really incredible. People that had never done portraits before procreate such a powerful tool that lets you do all kinds of things um, that kind of can't do quite as easily and with traditional media. You can do layers and measuring and all kinds of preliminary stuff to make sure that you get those proportions right and get the features placed right. So it was great. We had a, a really, really fun time. So um, we'll be running that Zoom workshop again soon. We're not really sure exactly when we're going to do it. Um, but we'll be announcing another wait list for that coming up really, really soon. All right. That's that's kind of it on announcements. Oh, other than, oh, my other big thing that's really, really exciting is that we just opened an Etsy store. So I'm kind of, you know, I'm still on Daily Paintworks, but we're kind of moving towards Etsy. Etsy is such a great platform that's really, really popular on and um, I think it's just a, a nice opportunity to get the work out there in a, in a, on a bigger platform than Daily Paint work. So, so there's lots of stuff there now, um, and so check it out. Mostly my, my demos and um, um, smaller pieces, smaller pastels for right now are on the Etsy, in, the, in the Etsy store. So check that out too. Okay, all right, I think I'm just about ready to start painting. I'm going to put my hair up. A and, quick question for yeah. you. Um, do you. Do you keep your brushes from... Oh, okay. Quick question. Yeah. Um, do you keep your brushes for oil painting separate from the brushes from acrylic? I try to. I try to keep them separate. But I do... Um, I'm pretty um, nerdy when it comes to cleaning the brushes. Especially, you know, especially in the last couple of years, in the in the, you know, my younger days of being an artist, I probably wasn't quite as good about that. But if you clean them really well, properly, you can use them for both media. Um, but you know, I I do have a I have a kind of a roll a, a paint roll. Um, this guy um, that I usually keep my my oil painting brushes in and you know in 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 reality you know I have all these all these brushes here in reality there's just a couple that I use that I really really like so it isn't that hard um, it, I have this proliferation of brushes but in fact I don't use that many all right so first thing I'm going to do today is mix up a little bit of paint um, and oh, the other thing that I'm doing today is you, you guys can't see it, but um, I'm looking at a painting by Nikolai Fetchin of, of um, sunflowers. And also I have a, um, a painting by Vuillard, who, whose work I really admire as well, that's a still life. So I'm taking some sort of style and cues from those pieces they're neither one are kind of exactly the same kind of composition that I'm doing but in terms of edges and just style and paint application it's helpful for me to be looking at something still life is not my um you know it, it's not my main focus of the my my body of work so it's it's good for me to look at something that I that I really like to, to guide me just a little bit. Okay, so let me get mixing some paint. I'm first going to mix some dark 
and then something for the background. The, the flowers themselves aren't that tough in terms of color, but I have to kind of decide what I'm going to do, the, ba the background. And I'm not, I'm going to use the photograph a little bit as an idea, but not, I'm going to play off of, I'm going to Im Im improvise a little bit. Okay, so I'm going to start out, I'm going to use some dioxazine purple. And um, I think I'm going to add some of this red oxide in here. That's kind of nice, rich, dark. And notice I'm using quite a bit of paint. It's pretty warm here today, so I want to make sure I get a nice little pile here so, I, it's, so it stays moist. Um, the, the bigger pile that you make, the longer that paint's going to stay malleable for you. Okay, there's that. And now I want something kind of on that neutral side. Um, let me think. This is some raw sienna, a little phthalo. And I don't need to have some of these colors, you know, like the phthalos are kind of, um, you could mix that, but um, I don't mind having that kind of extra secondary colors in there, that kind of tube colors. It's okay. And how about a little bit of this? Just get that out there. And I try not to over mix because I want that sort of fractured color, the interplay of the colors. So if I just don't mix um, completely, I, I get some of that sort of automatically, which is really cool. And I'm going to get something for the inside of the flowers. I think I should be able to move pretty fast once I get going, and that's awesome. So I've got a few things out here. And again, not over mixing. That's another reason this method kind of works well. I'm not really concerned about keeping the paint um, pristine in each of these. So if I dip in with the palette knife or a brush and I get the color a little dirty, that's okay. And I sort of even want that. All right. And Good. what blue are you using again there? Pardon? What blue were you using? Um, that was ultramarine mixed with a little dioxazine purple. And just give this a little spritz just to keep it. And now I'm going to get up there and I want to paint with a lot of, a lot of energy, a lot of um, play on those edges. So um, I'm going to use, I love, I'm going to use this long, uh, long flat. This is a rosemary brush. Um, this long, the long flat, it's got, it's got a little spring to it, which I like. Um, and the long bristles can hold a lot of paint and that's good. I want that. So I'm going to just come in first thing. Bonnie made a comment. Um, she says she recommends investing in quality acrylics just by fewer. Mm -hmm. She's, um, she regrets yeah. buying so many sheets. Yeah, yeah, that's a good point. So I totally 100% agree that um, you want to, you know, you can't go wrong with Liquitex or Golden. Um, but though both of those brands also have the um, lower um, pigment quality, you can, you can get that student grade. I try, I would try not to do that. I would try to Make make yourself buy the the more expensive paint. 
Let's see. Get that. I want a little sense of that. Just staining in some color here and there. And again, this is my first kind of stab at it, my first layer of color. Um, so I'm not worried about it being exact right now. I want to keep it really loose. Now I'm going to just go ahead and get a little something on here. Moving fast and fast and loose. And lots of scumbling. So notice that one thing that I would say above all else is notice that I'm not using very much water. I'm really keeping the paint really sticky and really um, on the thicker side. Um, using too much water is going to um, not allow you to get that nice impasto. Um, flavor. And I also feel like it, if you, um, if you use too much water and keep your, get your paint too thin, the other thing that um, usually happens is you're, you're, um, you're going to get really into detail because you're, um, You have to put more paint on there to get what you want. More layers. So this vase my mom gave me, she um, she got this in Portugal, and she, bless her heart, she brought it all the way from Portugal home to me. And really loose, so I'm not worried about this edge right here. I'm, I'll come back in and play with that and carve that out later.
I already think it's pretty awesome. I love it. Another question. Mm -hmm. uh, do you ever use the Stay Wet palette? Yeah, so this is just one sort of method that I use. But the Stay Wet, um, for me, when I'm doing something that's a little bit bigger in scale, um, I'm, I want a more mixing surface and I want to get more more paint going. And so the Stay Wet is great when you're doing something a, a little bit on the smaller side. Um, I think it's 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 great. Obviously, it's one of those tools that you want to be able to use. But um, what the the stay wet? I I actually do a like a do it yourself method of of doing using the the same principle as the stay wet. Okay. We cover that in uh, both. Yeah, of we do. We we sh I'll show you how in in the in the. Um, acrylic workshops. And what's the size of this canvas? I think it's I think it's 24 by 24. I'll measure it in a minute. Yeah, it looks like 2 by 2. I think it is. For sure. 24 inches by 24 inches. And I'm going to the base is super fun to play with, but I'm going to move on cuz I'm I'm having too much fun on it. I get it move move move. See, I'm using that same brush. And I'll get in here with a little bright color. Just for fun. The fetch and painting has this sort of little bright area in it over here in the corner. And I, it's not anywhere. It's not similar at all to my painting, but it's got a couple little ideas in it that are kind of fun. That's awesome. All right, let's get some, some of those petals in there because give us an idea of what's happening. So right, oh, I need to get thicker. So this paint layer, it's my first kind of paint layer. I haven't added any of the modeling paste, but I do want to keep it on the thick side. Let me make that a little darker. There we go. Like this. This is the inner part of the, the flowers. This one. And this one. When I w was preparing for this the other day, I had to draw the, I had to do the drawing twice. I, I did it and I wiped it off um, because I wasn't, it wasn't bold enough. It wasn't big enough. It wasn't bold enough. You know, I wanted this nice, um, and it was worth, it was definitely worth taking the time to redo it. It made all the difference. All right, how about some of that yellow now? I like this one already. What? I like this one already. I know, I like it too. That's, you know, it's just the power of like getting in there and, and just attacking it um, and not being afraid of it. 
that's, that's, that's a big deal. All right, let's see. That's maybe, maybe when I add a little. I see that kind of green tint to some of the these the ends of the petals. Not not as much as I've got here, but I'm putting it on here because I know I'm going to put more paint on here. See that color? Okay, so let that kind of sit there and dry a little bit. And as I'm doing that, I can kind of come in and carve in. And see my paint still, um, the, my little piles of paint are still pretty wet, which is good. That has a little of a green hue to it. The the yellow that I put on there. Yeah. Oh yeah, it's super green. And I'm but I'm I'm gonna come back over with another layer over the top of that. I don't really like this green. Let's see, maybe I'll. All right. More. Mixing up some, this is kind of a neutral. brown gray All right, it's coming along. Now, I, I want to decide on value up here. I'm thinking I want something lighter in value up in there. And so um, I'm going to come in. Oh. 
like so. I still want it to be kind of neutralized. Yeah, that's so cool. And then just a little scumbling, a little gradation. So I'm going to now head, make this darker. Just kind of establishing the whole value setup of the, of the piece. A bird. <laughs> it's probably hard to hear, but we have a, a neighbor who's a little quail. If you do hear it in the background, yeah, he, he whistles real, all the time. That's the, yeah. Just that. <laughs> uh, used to be cute. <laughs> <laughs> Used to be charming and cute. No, not so much. <laughs> okay, I love the texture. It's looking really cool. Um, Now I can start, begin to start carving out some of these petals. Now I still want to keep it really loose. I don't want to get into this in such a way that's going to take away from that cool looseness that I've got. So I've got to be careful there. Now, so this edge right there, to me, is a really important edge, and a and a kind of kind of pivotal because right here it's close in value. So this edge has a slightly lost and found feeling to it, right right there. Whereas over here it's a, it's harder edged, and so this is the dark against that light. So playing the 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 dark value against the light. Um, is something I always want to be, you know, thinking about, especially in something like this. Even in the portraits that we were doing in Procreate, you know, you want to pick out those kind of areas to create edges that that are going to serve you well, and but 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 keep your piece um, loose. If you if you make your edges so that they're all all the same and all hard edge, then your piece is gonna have a more graphic feel and not as um, not as loose and not not as sometimes less energetic. Because when something feels loose, it feels like it's it's dynamic. I'm using the dynamic mark making and style for that looseness. So a couple questions. Mm -hmm. um, first, how do you stay so loose? Okay, I'm, well, I'm mixing up a lot of paint. I'm definitely concentrating on going fast. I'm holding my brush out here. I'm not, I'm not up here. 
You know, you didn't see me doing any of that. I'm not doing that. I'm I'm out out on the end of my brush, you know, holding it out here, you know, here, not not here, I'm not holding that ferrule. I'm holding the handle of the brush. So so I'm coming in, I'm using this the the whole flat side, but also the side of the brush. If I need to do any line, I'm doing that. Um, little bit of that. I'm keeping the paint um, really um, wet. I, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm not wet, um, sticky. And also, um, during the workshops, do you explain what colors you're mixing? Yeah, you see the palette and and what I'm mixing. Yeah, t today is a little different that way I'm not. And we work generally from the same palette, right? It's a cold primaries palette. Right? Yeah, it's, it's, this is this, the, the foundation of my palettes of pro, pro crime, pro, pro, co primaries. It's <laughs> like, that's a classic can't talk and paint. We cover a lot of mixing in, in there. There's a yeah. whole there's a whole segment on I think in both in both workshops both of them. there's there's a yeah. mixing segment. And of course in color college too. Yeah. And would you uh, consider doing a um acrylic portrait demo? Oh yeah, I want to. I can show you a couple that I, I did. They're fun to do. Um, acrylics really fun to, to do with portraits. Getting some of these fun petals in there. Um. I get a little darker. This is, yep, still not, still not dark enough right there. I think I gotta go. I, think I actually gotta go here. Now, see, I um, don't want to get too tight, so I'm going to move on. Starting to play with those petals a little much. Another question. Mm -hmm. How do you decide? How do you decide if you want to do a painting in oil or acrylic? Um. Well, I sort of go in phases, where I'll work in one medium, and I just kind of get enamored of it, and I stick with it for a little while, and then I'll move on. Um, My my problem is I love it all. 
that's my issue. Um, acrylics just kind of more suited to certain things. I guess comment. also, I mean, the time of year and where you live. Yeah. When we, uh, when we filmed Seasons in Acrylic, it was like 100 degrees every day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That wasn't probably the greatest time of year to do it, but. It, it worked. We, we managed oh, we it. it. At, yeah. Whoop. Little negative painting here and there. I think it's coming together pretty nice. My paint still, you know, really nice. It's kind of surprising um, how little yellow I'm using. I'm going to pop in some more end here, but Right now, it's pretty minimal. Need some more of that neutral. It's kind of when when I started out, I was mixing primarily with the palette knife, and that's so that I can get a nice little pile. But then, as I'm working, um, I'm doing like sort of sub mixes with the brush. Um, I want to cut, cut. 
cut that down a little bit. Jacqueline says she signed up for an acrylic workshop. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. And then just making some what I want to do here. I got to transition down to this dark shape. Okay, I like it. Um, Just for fun, pop in a little bit of that. And then just echo it. All right. All right, now I'm, I think I'm going to put in a little bit more yellow here and there. And then I've got some stuff to, to resolve, just some edge stuff. But the, the foundation of it's really fun. some okay where do I want this bright yellow I don't want it too many places Want it up there? Maybe. I feel like um, it's got a nice quality of light to it, and which is really neat when you're doing something loose like this and you're able to get that still um, sense of light. So what is the decision-making process for deciding where to put those pops of yellow? 
I'm looking at how the light's hitting the direction of the light, the quality of the light. I don't want to overdo it. I'm, I'm letting them also describe some of the um, the petals, but um, the you know the light streaming from over here. I don't want to put every one in. little bit of um, and my vase down here. good. Now, um, before I wrap up for today, I'm going to just experiment a little bit with some modeling paste. Um, and, I, and I would probably have to spend a little bit more time with it, but so the first thing I want to do here is um, clear a little spot. I'm just using a little scraper from the hardware store. Inexpensive. This palette makes it really easy to clean this. And the other thing too is um, when you're all done and say your the paint's a little dried. If you just spritz it with water, it kind of starts getting kind of crinkly, and you can just scrape it really, scrape it up really easily from there. Where's my favorite palette knife? Okay, get some of this doxazine purple. And this, so this is the dark. Get some of my modeling paste. Ooh, it's brand new. All right, and so get my tongue depressor. These really come in handy. And it's just gonna get that paint. Give it a little bit more body. See, it does lighten it just a little. Something to keep in mind. So I want to go ahead and get it darker again. Another thing to keep in mind is... Um, when it comes to acrylics, a heavy bodied acrylics um, is kind of this for the mo most of this is heavy bodied acrylics um, the either Liquitex or Golden. There's a few couple colors in here that are maybe Blick Studio, um, and but I don't purchase the acrylic basics because that basics is a, another kind of way of saying student grade, and so. Um, for me, I'm going to shy away from that if I can. Um, it's not like it's terrible, but um, um, it's, it's not, the, the, the pigmenting power of the paint is not the same as the a bit better quality. So I'm playing with this a little bit. And the purpose of the modeling paste is for just texture. Thick, thickening, it just thickens it. to get a little more texture yet. Yeah. 
And after you clean your brush, do you dry them off? Um, I let them dry. So, um, and I put them upright, just like they are right here. Put them and let them dry. And really clean them up. It's just soap and water. You don't really need that. You don't need to buy brush cleaner. Um, just I use Dawn um, dishwashing soap. It works great. And can you remind us what um, brand the, the modeling paste is? Um, this one's Liquitex. All right, I'm thinking about that. Think about that. Yellow. Modeling paste. Get it on there a little. I really like how it turned out. Um, I'll post this on Etsy. So I think it's really fun. Do you ever put any varnish or finishing coats on? Yeah, I do. Um, so with acrylic, there's you know you you have a lot of options. Um, the a matte, just a matte medium or a um, gloss medium works really well. You can also, if you want it to be shiny, you can add a layer of galkid. And my big um, my big abstracts, I've been adding. Galkid to them, and they they look really cool. That really that they're really they have a lot of depth to them, so that that Galkid layer just like really pulls that that out. So that that's cool. So now now that I've got that on there. Um, what it makes me feel like is that I want to do one other thing. I want to get thicker paint up there in that light corner. Just a little bit more of this. Now you could see that I'm, you know, I'm, I'm using a lot of paint. I'm using a lot of product. And I feel um, that it's really important to do that. I see a lot of students, um, a big mistake is to not use enough paint. Um, Got to get in there with some paint. I love, oh, I love all that the best. It's the best. And now I've got these piles of paint. And yeah, I am going to throw away some of this paint before I'm, you know, done. But that's, that's okay. I don't look at that as a waste. That, that paint that I had to mix to figure it out. Um, is part part of what it took to make the painting. So I don't get upset about throwing away paint or anything like that. It's just part of part of it. Yeah, it's cool. So um, you use Galkit as uh, basically as a varnish. Yeah, for the for the big um, abstracts. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna do. 
one other thing and then I'm gonna have to call it quits. I've got a critique to do for my monthly people in a little bit. And I love how it turned out. Adjusting these little things. And um, just real quick, I want to show you the two things that I was looking at while I was painting so you can get an idea of that as well. Oops, I want that to be darker. So let me just share those two things with you. And um, then just re remember that the acrylic sale is to uh, May 23rd. So you have a little bit more time to check that out. And um, yeah, it's such a great deal. All right, so this is the Nikolai Fetchen piece, Sunflowers. It's an oil, so different, but See, I picked up on this blue, this little um, splash of blue here and then throughout, um, and just the way he carved out the petals from the dark and these beautiful neutrals that he used here. It's a great contrast with the bright yellow. So I picked up on that. Love it. And just the, the kind of um, little texture that's adding to just the whole flavor of it. It's really, really beautiful. Okay, and then I was also looking at this. This is from Artist Magazine, um, but this is um, Edward V. Yard. And you can find lots of his beautiful work. He did quite a lot of still life and florals, um, as well as being known for uh, being an interior painter of figures. All right. So uh, a couple, right. couple questions yeah. before we close. Yeah. Um, so uh, is the sale just for Seasons and Acrylic? The sale is for Seasons and Adventures. So two workshops. Two workshops, yeah. They're, they're, um, they're both on sale for um, $64. So that's $84 off each. So yeah, it's really um, a good deal. And can Galkid be used for acrylics? On acrylics? Uh, yeah. Not as a medium, though. Not as a medium, but for a for a varnish layer, yeah. But not not as a medium. Cool. And do you have a, any? Um, do you have a specific canvas brand that you prefer? Um, you know, it's kind of like anything else. You want to get the the best quality that you can afford. Um, I personally, I. Um, no, I use both canvas. I, I, I really enjoy painting on a birch panel. I like the panel because it's um, you can really get in there and get super physical with a, bir with a panel um, in a little bit different way than you can with, you know, canvas is going to have that give. Also, it's going to have a weave to it depending on what kind of canvas. Um, I usually just go for the pre- made, you know, manufactured ones, you know, I use Blick. Um, Blick has really good sales on canvas. Uh, so um, that's, that's a good, that's a good place to start. And you prime so, the, the birch panel, correct? Yeah, I do. Yeah. With a couple nice thin layers of gesso. So Just a couple little hits of light on that stem. It's kind of nice. And then I don't want to get too crazy out here. But yeah. All right, guys. I got to call it quits, but I had fun doing this for you. I um, hope you enjoyed it. 
think it turned out nice today. Um, hope some of you got to paint along. That would be fun. And um, the main thing is to use enough paint, stay loose, use the, the end of that handle instead of getting up there on the ferrule of it. And um, yeah, just fill. You can see that I really filled the entire canvas. I had to do, had to do the drawing twice because at first I was too small and it wasn't dynamic enough. So, yeah. Okay, thanks for joining us. See you guys soon. Bye-bye.